Excellence in installation is what the entire floor covering industry strives for, from the suppliers and manufacturers who make carpet and the distributors and retailers who sell it to the professionals who install it. Excellence is what Carpet and Rug Institute 105 is all about. CRI 105 is appropriately titled The Standard Reference Guide for Installation of Residential Textile Floor Covering Materials or the Residential Carpet Installation Standard. This document describes installation procedures and principles developed through practical experience, research, and information from every segment of the manufacturing, retail, and installation industry. CRI 105 is a voluntary standard offered as a minimum set of guidelines for the successful installation of residential carpet. It is intended for the installer and the retailer to provide a specific, practical, and doable set of guidelines. Over one and one-half billion square yards of carpet are sold in the United States each year. Well over half, 65 percent, ends up in the residential market. Because the U.S. residential market is the largest single carpet market in the world, and is the market that employs the largest number of installers and affects the largest number of end users, excellence in the residential installation community is key to the vitality of the industry. This is why the Carpet and Rug Institute, the national association representing carpet manufacturers and suppliers, together with all other industry segments, united to make CRI 105 a reality. Join us as we walk through a successful residential carpet installation. In the next few minutes, we will watch as a team of experts plan and complete an installation according to CRI 105 guidelines. A successful residential installation actually begins with a customer's visit to the carpet store. Here, she goes through the process of selecting the right products to fit both what she wants and what she needs. With the retailer's help, she finds the carpet that has the right color, the right texture, the right performance characteristics, and the right price. Once she has made that decision, she must select a cushion that will provide the proper support for her carpet. When the selection process is complete, the crucial planning stage begins. According to the standard, each room must be properly measured to ensure the efficient use of carpet. Proper measurement should take into account the location of jogs, projections, openings, hearths, closets, stairs, and door swings. If the installation is to involve stairs, the measurer should note the location of the stairs, indicating the number of steps, dimensions of the treads and risers, and the width of the stairs. During this initial phase, the customer must get involved in the planning. Who is responsible for removing and replacing furniture? Door heights may need to be adjusted. The customer should understand this and decide whose responsibility this will be. Likewise, the removal and disposal of the old carpet and cushion if necessary and any excess materials from the installation. Whose responsibility is it, the installers or the customers? Discuss this now to prevent misunderstandings later. Seam placement is critical to the final appearance and acceptability of the installation. When possible, seams should be placed toward the primary light source. If not possible, seams should be located out of heavy traffic areas or placed where they can be covered over by furniture. Explain this to the customer. Get her approval. It is also important to inspect the condition of the designated areas for existing damage and make a list of things like chipped paint, scratched walls, and damaged furniture. This precaution is protection for everyone involved. The installer should recheck the list before the installation, adding to it if necessary. Now that all the information is gathered, CRI 105 specifies that a detailed drawing of the installation should be made. The basic information includes the name of the building owner and installation company. If it is new construction, names, addresses, and phone numbers of the general contractor, architect, and interior designer are also included. Each floor should be numbered and rooms labeled, and the drawing should be dated. There must be a scale drawing of the carpet layout prepared by the salesperson or estimator for each area to be carpeted, including stairs, noting the location, swing, and clearances of all doors. The scale drawing should indicate for each area what type of floor is down now. This drawing must also show the layout of seams, 
pile direction, die lot notations, and pattern matching information. According to the CRI 105 standard, die lots should be matched or sequenced. A three inch minimum overage is required per cut of carpet. The carpet manufacturer's name and the carpet quantity and color for each area should also be included along with the cushion manufacturer's name and cushion quality for each area. In addition, the diagram should show the location and type of all edge moldings as well as the type of wall base in each area. A cut list should accompany the drawing clearly indicating the area in which each cut is to be installed. We're almost ready to begin preparation for the actual installation. But first, the measure should get the customer's agreement to seam placement. The customer must also agree to any quarter turning of carpet. Good planning prevents costly problems later on. Before the installation crew leaves for the job, the installation foreman and the salesperson must review the layout of the installation, noting any unusual requirements. The installation foreman should double check the carpet and the cushion to be sure the correct materials are being supplied in accordance with the shop drawing and sales agreement. The installer should also check his toolbox to be sure he has the necessary equipment. CRI 105 lists the tools required for residential installations. Remember that the CRI 105 standard requires that all wall-to-wall -wall carpet must be installed using a power stretcher. The installer must also have the proper installation materials for the job. Metal and vinyl moldings, seaming tape and tackless strip. Adhesives used should be according to manufacturer's specifications. CRI 105 lists the adhesive types from which to select. Latex, vinyl back carpet adhesive, carpet seam adhesive, carpet seaming latex, contact cement, urethane carpet cushion adhesive, and seam sealer. It also prescribes minimum adhesive amounts for various carpet backing and construction types. Once the proper materials are gathered, the installer is ready to go to the job site. Practice good customer relations by arriving at the customer's home at the specified time. Proper attire and good manners, though not specified in CRI 105, are all part of maintaining rapport with the customer. The standard contains a section on good customer relations. Once at the job site, it is important to unroll the carpet so it can relax and ventilate. Cushion and adhesives likewise should be conditioned to the site prior to installation. The standard specifies that rolls of carpet should not be bent or folded unless necessary for delivery. Once at the site, they should be unfolded immediately in a dry, secure area. Ventilation of the area during installation is very important open windows if possible. If not, adjust the thermostat to allow maximum flow of air throughout the building. Ideally, carpet should be installed when the temperature is between 65 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit and the relative humidity is between 10 and 65 percent. And if installing over concrete, the slab's temperature should not be less than 65 degrees Fahrenheit. CRI 105 includes minimum standards for the installation of direct glue, double glue, attached cushion carpet, outdoor carpet, and synthetic turf. However, since the majority of residential installations are stretch in over separate cushion, our focus is on that type of installation. Remember that CRI 105 is a minimum standard. Manufacturers' recommendations for specific products should be followed and are the only reason to deviate from the guidelines. If the installation replaces existing carpet, the removal of the old carpet must be done first. CRI 105 states specifically that carpet shall not be installed over existing carpet, nor shall cushion be installed over existing cushion. Floor preparation is very important in any installation. According to the standard, each subfloor should be properly prepared according to the recommended procedures. Any subfloor ridges or uneven areas which could become visible or cause failure must be corrected. Floor prep includes a thorough cleanup prior to cushion installation, including vacuuming the subfloor.